Now we are getting to the conflict process. And as you see, there is a nice model describing the conflict process and it's consisting from five stages. So first stage, second, third, fourth and fifth one. So in this video, we are going to talk about the first two stages. So the stage one is the potential opposition or incompatibility and second one is cognition and personalization. So let's get to it. Stage one, potential opposition or incompatibility. So the, the thing is that the conflict always arises of something and there are three, three possible sources of the conflict where it can occur. It is communication, structure and personal variables. So that the communication says there can be some semantic difficulties between two parties engaged. So with a semantic, uh, we mean the truthful meaning so that the parties do not really understand what the other person means. And so this can lead to the conflict. And of course, there are some misunderstandings and noise. So be careful when you are communicating so that the other party really understands what you have meant so that you avoid the conflict. Secondly, we have a structure. The larger the group, more specialized, the larger is the potential for conflict to occur. Well, why is it so? When the groups are larger and when they are more specialized, what is the difference between people? Well, goals, goals. The more people there are, the more diverse the goals are going to be. And the more specialized people are, well, the more diverse the goals are going to be again. So in larger and specialized groups, the conflicts occur more often. Finally, we have a personal variables. And we, we know this very well. Some people just tend to get to conflict a lot. Why is it so? Because of three points, personality, emotions and values. If we are communicating with someone and we have a very different values, it is something similar as goals are. We simply tend to get to the conflict because of these values. Emotions are some short term and fast reactions to some events. And if we are in a bad mood, the conflict can simply occur because of the emotions. And of course, if the other party, uh, other party's personality does not fit us very well, again, we can get to the conflict. So you can see that every conflict begins with something and it is stemmed in one of these three points when it comes to the organizational behavior, the communication structure or personal variables. Now, when stage one, if conditions from stage one negatively affect something that one party cares about, second stage arises. So let's highlight it. So if it negatively affects something that one party cares about, the second stage arises. And the second stage is called cognition and personalization. So the question is, if we are going to take it personally, so we can go either one of the two ways. We can either take it personally or we can go through something that we call the perceived conflict. And perceived conflict is even when two parties are in disagreement, neither of the party takes it personally. And that's nice, isn't it? So that you should keep in mind that it's, it's just one conflict and so that you can resolve it and you should bring no emotions. So in this case, there are really no emotions. Or the worst scenario is when it is a felt conflict, when individuals become emotionally involved. So those were the first two stages in the conflict process. It is always stemmed in one of the three sources that we have discussed, and then it goes through one of these two ways. It is either a perceived conflict, even when even when the two parties are in disagreement, neither takes it personally, or in a worse scenario, it is a felt conflict when they become emotionally involved.